The transition to university was one of the biggest, hardest transitions of my life. And I walked into it completely blind. So today, we, you and I, are going to go through the four main things that you can do to prepare for this huge transition you're about to make in your life. Hashtag. This is me, the morning of my first day of university. Excited and eager to get going with my studies. Was I blissfully unaware of the absolutely chaotic year that was about to follow? Yes. Yes, I was. The extent of my preparation for this huge monumental change in my life was literally picking my subjects and turning up on the first day. Late, lost, and completely frazzled. This first day was only the beginning of a long and difficult year. Everyone had told me that uni would be the best time of my life, and I was so ready for everything they promised, but it didn't deliver. By the end of the first year, that bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, excited first-year student very strongly resembled Hurricane Katrina. I felt overwhelmed, anxious all the time. Uni life was not shaping up to be the chill, fun, amazing, best life experience ever. So today, we are going to set you up so that uni life is amazing. It is a wonderful experience and you actually thrive. Not only do you thrive, but you set up a better future for yourself. Then we're going to talk about preparing for the first day of university. And then we're going to talk about what to take to uni on a daily basis. For the final three years of university, I implemented these four things that we're gonna go through and my life turned around, complete 180. So let's get to it. How can you make sure that you are adequately prepared for that first year of university? Just before we get into what you need to prepare for the very first day of university, if you're finding any value in this video at all, don't forget to show the like button some love. Connor and I absolutely appreciate it so much. So thank you and we'll get back into the video. The first thing is so absolutely crucially important that even if you don't do anything else in the rest of the video, this will make your life at university and beyond a million times better. You need to sit down and dream about your ideal day in your ideal life. So you really need to get specific with this. Five years from now, what time are you gonna be waking up? Where are you gonna be living? What do you do when you first wake up? What do you have for breakfast? Do you have a morning routine? What does your lunch look like? Do you spend time with your loved ones? Do you get to relax? Do you have downtime? What time are you going to bed? Think about it, reflect on it every day and start to align your actions with your dreams. Now the coolest thing about this is that I first did this exercise four years ago and what I wrote down seemed so impossible. And now, four years later, I am living out almost every single one of those dream daily choices. To me, that is just proof that our small daily actions that we don't even think about sometimes, they are pushing you down a certain path. They are what direct your day. So that's the best thing that you could possibly do. But here are some other really great tips. The next thing you can do that is really crucial is to create a timetable that actually suits your life. If this is your first time going to university, you're going to need some time to warm up to university life. So it's really important that no particular day is super jam packed and also that you're giving yourself some days off. For me personally, two to three days at university was definitely the sweet spot because it meant that I had time either on campus or at home where I could dedicate to actually studying outside of class. So you've got your timetable set up and now you know the times and the places that you are expected to be somewhere, class and work. The next step is for you to build a routine. Now this is somewhat different to just mapping out your timetable. Your routine is where you show up for yourself. No one is forcing you to move your body regularly or to practice that instrument or really build up that skill. And this is going to be really crucial to making sure that you are living a positive life, one that gives you a lot of meaning throughout university. If you only build a life based on your timetable, 
based on where other people expect you to be, your life will slip by you. It'll be like being in a car driven by someone else. Your routine is what's going to bring it back to you, to your values, and to make sure that you're feeling positive and you are getting the most out of every single day. It might also look like scheduling in fun time for yourself, downtime where you get to do whatever you want to do, no guilt attached. It's important that we factor in our fun time because if we are all work, all study, all the time, we are definitely going to burn out and we'll find ourselves procrastinating. We want to get intentional about how we're spending our time. And then work on showing up for yourself. Start it right now, even if university hasn't started yet. Begin to practice those routines. The third thing is your finances. Now, students are notoriously really bad with their money, but it really doesn't have to be this way. There are a lot of things that you can do to really set up a rock solid financial system for yourself right now. So the first thing that you can do is get your bank account accounts sorted out. If you're paying fees with your current bank account, stop and get a new bank account. The easiest, simplest thing that you can do to encourage you to keep saving is to put your savings into a high interest savings account. Unfortunately, at the moment, the interest rates are quite low and the highest one that I've been able to find that has absolutely zero fees is with 86400. They give 1.2% and it is the exact bank account that my husband and I use ourselves. 86400 will actually pay you to sign up with them and if you use our affiliate link then we'll both get $20. The next thing you can do to sort out your finances as a student is to make sure that you have consolidated your superannuation funds. Now if you've had multiple casual jobs most likely you have multiple superannuation funds which means you're paying for multiple sets of fees. The fees don't sound like much but over time they really can make a huge difference. So the best thing that you can do is is first consolidate your super. Then you can actually look at picking the best super for you, one that has minimal fees and an investment option that suits your needs. The third thing that you can do for your finances when preparing to be a university student is to get a casual part-time role that pays well, get a job that is in your field of study and also start to build up a side hustle that can create a passive income stream. I just recently created a video all about the best jobs that students can take on whilst at university so I'll link it above and in the description below check that out after this video another really crucial thing that you need to do for your student finances is to set up a budget for yourself this budget can't look like an extreme money makeover it can't look like the equivalent of a no carb no sugar diet it needs to be realistic and it needs to be super simple as a student, I spent years trying to budget and I would always be super over ambitious with how much I thought I could save. And I would put away heaps every time I got my paycheck, I'd put away heaps of money into my savings. And then within a week, I'd be spending it all. I'd be dipping into my savings and spending it all anyway. So after a few years, I learned how to budget with percentages because as a student, your income is fluctuating. So there's no use trying to put aside a set amount of money every pay period because the amount of money coming in is going to be different every time. So instead, try to put aside a percentage of your income. So my best piece of advice for your finances is to start saving only a small amount. Start with 10 or 15% of your income. Now, at the beginning, you might look at how much you're putting into your savings account and you might think that's nothing. I could save heaps more than that. But start with that small amount anyway. Once you are consistent with it and after a, a month or two months of you consistently putting away that money and you don't have to dip into your savings, then and only then start to think about upping the percentage. So make a super simple 
budget and if you'd like to see a video on how to build a really nice simple budget that's basically on autopilot as a student comment down below and we will make you one because I have an amazing spreadsheet that I used when I was a student and it was really easy and it really helped me with my savings. So in terms of preparing for your first day of university, there's actually a lot of things that you can do. Obviously you need to enroll into your subjects and build your timetable. But the third step that everyone forgets is to go and see an academic advisor and confirm that you have indeed enrolled in the right subjects. I know some people who got to the very end of their degree thought that they were graduating only to receive an email to say, oh, you actually haven't done this one first year subject that you really needed to have done in order to graduate. So scheduling an appointment with an academic advisor is a must. And actually I would do that like every semester or every second semester to just make sure that you're on track. The next thing is to buy some comfortable clothes. I'm not even kidding. University life can see some really long days lugging around some really heavy bags. So it's really important that you get some seriously comfortable clothes. Make sure you're wearing proper walking shoes and you get yourself a bag that will not break your back. I walked around with like a tote bag for the beginning of my student life and I swear <laughs> this shoulder is now lopsided. So a backpack is definitely the way to go. Sign up to Facebook groups and pages that are related to your university and to your course. This is where you're going to find secondhand textbooks, study notes, and any general tips about the university. So prior to the first day, it's really important that you log into the student portal and this will tell you what you need to bring for each class for week one. Sometimes week one only has a lecture and, and no tutorials. You also want to check that and that will be posted on the student portal. The next thing is to get access to your university email and check your email to see if you have been sent any introductory notes from your lecturers or tutors check out the route to get to campus. Decide whether you're going to drive and if you are going to drive, where are you going to park or have a look at the public transport route. My very first day of university, I missed my very first lecture because I just completely forgot to take account of morning traffic. So I got to university an hour late and I fully missed my first lecture. In order to prepare for your actual first classes, it's really important that you have a look at your unit outline. I really strongly recommend recommend printing these out and referring to them throughout the entire semester. They tell you everything you need to know about the subject, what textbooks you need, how many times you actually need to go to class, what classes are compulsory, the different assessments, when the assessments are due. Those unit outlines will really be your like holy grail for each subject. Next is to buy your textbooks. As I mentioned, the Facebook groups are a really good place to get secondhand textbooks. Just be aware that there are different editions for each different textbook. And so sometimes you'll be the first year with the new edition, which means you can't really get the secondhand textbook. That sometimes the library allows you to borrow the textbooks. And so if you get in early, you don't have to buy them. You can just borrow them for the semester. Textbooks can be really expensive. So if you can get by without it, that's great. But also don't do yourself a disservice just to save a little bit of money because at the end of the day, learning the content is what you're there for. Now, after the first day, something that I really recommend is going up and introducing yourself to your tutors, to your lecturers, so that you can start to build that rapport with them and start to build up your network. This was something that I really underutilized at university and it's a resource that is really, really underestimated. If you can build good relationships with your tutors and your lecturers, your university experience will be completely different. They will be more willing to help you if they feel like you're an active member of their class. And they might even put you in touch for future opportunities, either at the university or in your career. They can also be really helpful when it comes to preparing for assessments and exams. One year I was really struggling with this particular law subject and I emailed my tutor and she actually sat down with me for about an hour and worked through the problems with me. So definitely a top tip. Okay, what to take to university. The key to remember here is that you will be on your feet walking from class to class, normally across campus, all 
day. So you need to pack as lightly as possible. Now, when it comes to textbooks, they're going to be one of the heaviest things in your bag. Once you've deciphered, yes, I need the textbook for this class, you can work out, do I actually need the textbook each week or do I just need the textbook to write my notes and to study from home? If that's the case, don't bring your textbook. Just make sure that you're adequately prepared for class so that you can call on the information as needed. You can also bring a copy of your timetable. It's definitely better if you print it out or you've screenshotted it on your phone because it's so annoying to have to log into the student portal every time and flip your phone around so that you can read your timetable. It's annoying. So definitely bring that. If you're going to work from a laptop, which you probably should, definitely bring a charger. Do not forget your charger because otherwise you'll get to halfway through the day and you'll have a dead laptop and that will just be really annoying. Definitely bring a notebook and pen just as a backup and sometimes it's just easier to jot down things. So I would bring both. So don't forget to bring food to eat or at least bring money to buy food. I actually kind of recommend in the first few weeks bringing money to buy foods and factoring that into your budget so that after class when you're meeting people for the first time you're happy and you're comfortable to say say yeah sure I'll come to the food court with you I'll buy a coffee I'll buy some lunch and that way you can use it as a moment to bond with your classmates and make some friends but then as semester goes on I would definitely try and bring your lunch because it will get very expensive if you're buying coffee and lunch every day. In terms of bringing your lunch, make sure you're bringing things that aren't going to spill everywhere. I've had so many incidences where my food is all through my bag, all through my books. Very frustrating. So invest in some really solid Tupperware and make sure you wrap it in a bag as well. And of course, bring a water bottle. You definitely don't want to be wasting money on buying water. Grab yourself a reusable water bottle and bring that. You'll also need your campus card, or if you're going to pick up your campus card, you'll need ID to actually pick up that campus card. Good luck and we'll see you in the next one.